Jesus often spoke in a way that was designed to confront and even shock his listeners. I imagine his disciples would have been quite shocked when he informed them that their virtue must go deeper than that of the scribes and the Pharisees, figures who are renowned for their strict adherence to the law. And you can almost hear the disciples gasp when he announces that it's better to tear one's eye out rather than allow it to be a source of sin. It's important to acknowledge the rhetorical nature of Jesus' words. He's not insisting on extreme adherence to the law, but rather that the law be brought to its completion. The law of God is complete when it fulfills its purpose of transforming the hearts and minds of the faithful, when it moves us beyond ourselves to a genuine love of God and a genuine love of our neighbour. When God's law transforms us in this way, we find that it's not burdensome, but a law which is truly life-giving. If we want to find the fullness of life that God is calling us to, then simply refraining from killing is insufficient. Rather, God calls us to take this law against violence to its completion, allowing it to move us to a full and genuine reconciliation with our brothers and sisters, a true meeting of hearts and minds. Similarly, when it comes to matters of marriage and sexuality, Jesus is calling us to truly life-giving relationships, relationships that are marked by integrity and a capacity to forgive, to love, and most importantly, to persevere when the going gets tough. As Christians, we are called to live lives that reflect the unbreakable bond of love between God and his creation. When we do so, our lives are truly a sign of God's kingdom and a witness to the fullness of life that God offers us in Jesus Christ.